Okay, hi, I'm Don Murray and welcome to my collection. I just moved here a year ago from uh, California to Scottsdale and, uh, and it was a process getting uh, most of the cars here. Uh, they're not all here yet, but they will be within the next year. Uh, so, I'd like to just start and talk about some of the cars. And uh, these are the Ferraris that we have. Uh, the first one, the dark blue one, is a 1950 166, uh, and it's a touring bodied car. It's VIN number 43, so it's a, probably the 22nd road Ferrari built. Uh, this car, is also touring bodied, 51. It's the exact opposite. That car has a, maybe 110 horsepower. And this car had 265 horsepower when it raced. And this one, even though it's bigger, is actually lighter. So this is a, a real uh, animal to race. Just driving it today is quite a challenge. This 56, is a uh, 250 GT Special. It's one of four Specials built in 56. And this one was built for one of the Agnelli family members. And he wanted a, uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing. So it's this beautiful bodied peanut farina. Uh, and underneath it, it had a uh, Tour de France drivetrain. The seats are big seats like a Mercedes seats. The gauges are bigger gauges. Uh, and it was a very special car for him to uh, take up into the mountains. This is my Super America. This is the first Ferrari actually I acquired, uh, not knowing what I was doing anyway. Uh, and this one has been on display at the Peterson twice. Uh, it's a 400 Super America. It was, it was ordered by Nelson Rockefeller in New York. He ordered it silver with a red interior and it showed up this color, which is called Amberon. Well, this is 275 GTB short nose. It's an early model. Uh, I know the 275 GTB 4 cam is, is kind of the one other collectors like, but I like the short nose because this is the most balanced look to me. Uh, Batista Pinofarina said it was one of his favorite designs. He didn't have to compromise on the proportions as he did later on. And this particular car was actually ordered by one of these four uh, Italian uh, aristocratic women that were always hanging around with Enzo. And what we found out was when we had a classic case that she complained to Enzo about the power. It wasn't enough for her. So he had her take it to, to the original factory in Modena where they rebuilt the motor with more power and, and, and therefore the motor was stamped with the old uh, Modena numbers versus the uh, new Mari uh, Marinello factory numbers. And, uh, and this is a, an original Daytona. If you look carefully, it's unrestored. It's a 1969, one of the very first ones. The paint's all cracked. The plexiglass covers are cracked, and we want to keep it that way. We like it unrestored. These are two Dinos. One is a 1969 L series Dino uh, with aluminum lids and doors. And then this one's a 1974 Dino. It's a spider, so the top comes off, fits behind the seats. Uh, and this one has power windows and, and, and a radio and everything. This one doesn't have any of that. It's just plain stripped down. These are the Alphas. This is a 2600 uh, SZ, meaning it was built by Zagato. And it's uh, very few of these around. I, I think it's such a striking design with the square headlights and the nose the way it is. Just a beautiful car. 
This is a, a, a little Sprint Zagato. These were all built as race cars. This one's painted blue because it was delivered in Argentina where it was raced. And this is Argentinian blue. This is my, this is an Alpha 1900 from 1953. Uh, the interesting thing about it is it was always a race car, but it was built with a bench seats and a column shifter. And it ran in the Giro d'Italia, it ran in the Targa Florio, uh, ran in the Tour of Italy, and actually did really well, even though it had a, just had a 1900cc motor. And these are the two Lancias. One's a B20, this is a B24. Uh, we've done the California Mille in this one twice. It's just a wonderful driving car, really handles well. And this is a Cisitalia 202. Cisitalia was considered the first modern sports car, designed in 1947 by Battista Pininfarina, and it was the first car collected by the Modern Art Museum in New York. And they, were, they did very well. Their, the engines were based on Fiat's, and uh, Carl Abarth was his engineer, so he built the motors up to have a little bit more power. And uh, they actually, one of these actually won the um, Millimiglia in the 1940s. And this is a little Seata, 1955. It's a 300 BC. Uh, and these were really successful little race cars. They only built about 50 of them maybe at the most. These are on the Porsche side now. This is a 1952 Cabriolet, very early model. You know, when I got this car, it's because my wife wanted it. She loved the color and I bought it and all of our Porsche friends said, well, why would you buy a Prie? And they said, because we wanted it. It's a piece of history. You know, they said, well, it doesn't drive that well. I said, you know, a Honda drives better than most old cars, so what? We wanted it and and we get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It drives great and everything. This is uh, one of our more historical cars. This is a 1955 RS Spider. This was on a uh, Paris show car. Uh, it's painted French racing blue uh, because it was in France. After the Paris show was over, it was a race car from for about two and a half, three years. Uh, it did very well. It actually won uh, Formula 2 race. Uh, it won, uh, it placed about 25% of the races it was in, it placed in uh, one, two, or three, which is really good back then because the, they broke down a lot in the early 50s. The, the thing about this is it's original paint. The tubes are all original. It's never been in a major accident. It wasn't bent at all. Uh, and when I bought it, it was sitting and had been taken apart and the owner wanted to get it restored. And he got tired of waiting. So I bought the whole thing from him. And we decided not to restore it, but instead to preserve it. And so we cleaned everything in the boxes and put it all back together again. So it's a, it's a very, historical car and it's, I love the way it drives too, it's like a little go-kart. And then this is a 1956 uh, aquamarine blue and it's a, a sunroof coupe so it's very rare. It was owned by uh, two major collectors, uh, one after the other. They took it to various uh, Porsche concourses where one overall first place 44 times. So a neat little car. This is my black speedster. To me, like speedsters are almost the perfect little car. You get 30 miles to the gallon. I'd be driving down Pacific Coast Highway in Laguna Beach, in Newport Beach, and I'd be going 60 miles an hour, 65. I'd be passing people in their AMG and M classes and all this other stuff. And I get 30 miles a gallon and think it's just a perfect car. If it wasn't for all the big SUVs, it'd be great to drive every day. And this is 1962 Carrera 2. So this was basically, looked like a, a typical 356, but it had a, a four cam race engine. According to a book I found that had this in, uh, this car was featured in the book, it, 
They said it was a factory rally car in France and then at the end of the season, Porsche took the car back and refurbished it and then sold it as a new car in uh, France. Uh, this is a 1964 904. Uh, this was the first car that Bootsy Porsche designed on his own and supposedly he did it in just a matter of weeks to get ready for the race season. This car was very successful in Germany. Um, had a famous German driver, Sepp Gregor. Uh, he won the German Hill Climb Championship. Uh, Vasek Polak uh, in Manhattan Beach acquired the car and raced it. Uh, we put the car, restored the car in, in, in the last configuration that Vasek Polak had had it done. This is a, a 1964 901. 901 was the nomenclature before they had 911. This one's an early one, so a lot of the features on the car are like prototypes. Uh, and this is number 18. I had this car restored in Germany by Alois Roof because he knows a lot about 901s and he's restored probably five or six of them already. This is an, another early uh, 65 911, 300 VIN number one. Probably the only one that exists that I know of. This is a 1970 911S that's basically a new, a new car. It only has 700 miles on it from new, all documented. It even still has Cosmoline on the bottom of the engine from when they shipped them uh, overseas. So this is the only car we actually don't drive. We do run the engine and warm it up, but we're keeping the miles low on it. This is a, a 914.6 GT Lufthansa car. Very well known in Germany, the Lufthansa team. There's a photo of it on the wall over here. Uh, 1970 set the uh, fastest lap at the Nürburgring, 1,000 kilometers, and came in second. Uh, this is a 73 RS, uh, and this is actually a very, uh, one of the very first cars. It's the 25th one built, kind of unusual in that the, uh, it was ordered by a Porsche technician. He wanted to race it, uh, but he also had to drive it to work. So he had enough, once it got homologated, he put enough options on it so it passed the, the, the driving requirements so he could drive it to work, but then he immediately raced it all the time. And he ordered it with a racing uh, driver's seat and a regular passenger seat. So, and it came in this unusual color of chartreuse. This is my, my Roadster, 61 Roadster, and it's unrestored. If you look, the paint's faded and everything, but we drive it, we take it on tours and everything else. And this is my 50th anniversary car. This is an unusual car. It's a Porsche-based race car, built in Belgium to resemble an Abarth Carrera. Kind of a unique car. It's very lightweight. Weighed about 400 pounds less than a 356 at the time. They did very successful in the hill climbs and rallying. This is a little Riley Elf rally car. Okay, this this little blue race car is a, is a uh, a Sebring Sprite. It was built, four of them were built for Sebring. Uh, this car was uh, raced by uh, uh, Bruce McLaren. Uh, I think he came in second in the four hour race. Uh, the other drivers of the four cars, one of them was Sterling Moss. We have a photo of uh, this car in the lead and Sterling behind him in one of the other Sebring Sprites. So even though it looks like a Sebring, like a regular Austin Healy Sprite, it's actually made of fiberglass with balsa wood stringers, so it was super lightweight. This is the uh, little Ford Hot Rod, so it's a Lotus Cortina. So Ford built about two million Cortinas around the world, and they wanted a sporting image, so they had about 800 of these were built by Lotus, with Lotus engines and, and drive frames and they're very successful 
uh, race cars in the Salon Championship in, in uh, the UK. These two cars we have because my wife wanted them. Uh, this is a Aston Martin DB2 Series 4 slash 3 and uh, she loves the car. She's driven it once, but she loves the way it looks. This is a, a, a Jaguar XK120. Again, Carol loved this car because from the door back, it reminds her of a Bugatti Atlantic. So, so again, it's, a, it's called the XK120 because it was the fastest production car at the time and could reach 120 miles an hour. This, is, this car is a 1934 Elvis. And we've got the engine out doing work on it. Uh, what's interesting about the Elvis is 1934, it was the first production car that had a fully synchronized transmission, way before anybody else. This is my first Italian car, an Iso Griffel 7 liter. This car has so much power that you never have to take it out of second gear. It's got a four speed transmission, but even, even in second gear, you're going 60 miles an hour and you're not even at 3,000 RPM. It's got plenty of power. It was the first production car that in a road test could do 300 kilometers an hour. Consequently, most of those were sold in Germany. And the Germans have the most fanatical seven liter Iso Griffel club. This is my Shelby GT350 Hertz car. This is the 57 Corvette that again, my wife wanted. So Carol wanted this and we got it. She felt it was the most iconic Corvette. It was a 57 fuel injected, really considered the first performance Corvette. And this is the Cunningham. It's a C3 1953 Continental Coupe. Uh, so Briggs Cunningham wanted to build an American car that could win Le Mans. And he started with uh, two Cadillac-based race cars. And then he developed his own car. Uh, and he had, for the size of his business, he had a lot of success. Uh, but then the IRS came in and shut him down in 53. Uh, he won he won Sebring outright, but he never won Le Mans outright. He came in, I think he came in third, but his cars were much heavier than the European cars, and they didn't have disc brakes because the uh, Dunlop who made the disc brakes would not sell it to them because they were being pressured by Jaguar. This is a 56 Bentley. It's a two-door coupe. This is their sports car version. Uh, the, I, I love the way these things are so, they're made so fine. So Bentley focused on, of course, four-door cars made at their plant and crew. So they didn't have the facilities to build these themselves. So the Pinot and Farina built the chassis, shipped them to England. Bentley supplied the drivetrain and then you picked the uh, customer would pick a car builder to build the bodies and, and then assemble the car. So this is uh, built by Park Ward. This is a little four-door Alfa Berlinetta. To be honest, it's one of the least expensive cars. It's probably uh, one of the most fun cars to drive around, if not the most fun car to drive around town. It handles unbelievably. This is a DKW delivery van. So this little car had 28 horsepower, has a three cylinder motorcycle, two stroke engine. But look at the back here, just show you how much room it has. Look at that. So Aloise Roof said he remembers these coming up the hill towards their shop and he said you'd hear putt, 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 because it only has 28 horsepower, but they're very usable back then. This is a, a very rare Douglas. Uh, Derek Boyks, who helps me over here, 
uh, he acquired this to to uh, refurbish it and, and uh, drive it around with his dog in it because it has a <laughs> little capacitor there. Derek, what, you, what year is this? 1930, uh, Douglas S6 with the factory sidecar and frame. I just bought it because of the sidecar. I've been looking for one uh, for Dino to ride around in, but also this bike is just very appealing in its style. Engine and drivetrain set up and then it's a preservation uh, project, so I had planned just to clean it and, <clears throat> and ride it around. Have you ridden it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What it's size is the motor? 600cc, but it's all, I mean, it's, it's very original. It's got the old lodge plugs in it. Everything is original as far as paint and license and registration goes. The only thing that's not is the rear muffler, so just going to be a preservation cleanup and enjoy. This is my 300 SL Roadster. Uh, I should say it's actually Carol's 300 SL Roadster. She wanted one and uh, we were lucky to find this one with uh, Bruce Canepa up in Scotts Valley. It's, it's the one I wanted to get because it's a alloy engine, which is rare, and a disc brake car. So those two features make it a very rare car. Uh, great driving car probably one of the best, greatest Mercedes after the post-war that they ever made. So I want to thank you all for taking the tour with me. Uh, Carol and I have been big supporters of the Peterson and, and longtime members of Checkered Flag and, and uh, really admire uh, what Bruce and the museum have done over the years.